tonight on the bill. This is my life, and I don't need some jumped up wannabe telling me how to live it. Understand me? For an hour and a half, and then the main witness doesn't even turn up. Maybe he's stuck in traffic. That's <laughs> what you do about it, mate. It's not our fault. Oh, we've got to find a way out of this. Go lift up the bottom, man. Okay. Oh, oh. Turn left. Brilliant. Turn left. You got any music? No. What, no CDs? No. <sighs> Hello? Joe, it's Max. Oh, hi, Max. Do us a favour. Tell the DR we're going to be late. Yeah, it's going to be another half hour at least. Yeah, I know. The traffic's a killer this morning. <laughs> Tell me about it. I'll make sure she knows. See ya. All right. I knew we should have gone in my car. I told you I need to speak to somebody now. It's important. Can you put me through? Hi, Joe. Uh, yeah, OK, Sarge. Yeah, I'll take my rest when I've finished here. No problem. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I'm PC Valentine. I believe you wanted to speak to somebody. Yes. Miss? Halina Leshnik. Leshnik. OK. Would you like to come through here and tell me all about it? Morning. Morning. Morning, Joe. How are you today, Joe? Oh, well, thanks for asking, Kezia. I'm fine. Well, I say fine. I probably shouldn't have had that curry last night, but... I didn't see you come in. Hi. Hey, she speaks. Sorry. You OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Hey, why don't we split this? Looks like you could use it. Thanks. Have you actually been home? Doesn't feel like it. Listen, you know, Kezia, there's no point working all the hours God sends if all you're going to do when you're getting your exams is fall asleep. I can handle it. If I pass, that's it. I'm not a training anymore. You're not really worried, are you? You're a natural, trust me. <laughs> you think? I do. And you're already one step ahead of Max and Terry. How do you mean? Well, they can't even make it into work in time. Stuck in traffic, allegedly. <laughs> Roadworks. How many times do they have to dig these roads up? I have no idea. Why don't they all get together? The gas people, the water people, whoever else. Then dig it all up at once, stick all their pipes and jibs in at the same time. Just get it over and done with it one go. Doesn't take a genius, does it? That's brilliant. You should go into politics. Do you think so? Yep. Hello. Well, oh, you said you didn't have any music. Yeah, well, I lied. Wow. I didn't know you were into all this. Oh, what? This. What? Cowboy music. What's so funny about that? Nothing. Then why are you laughing? I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not. Quality. You have to have it so loud. What's wrong with it? It's your music, mate. You like it, don't you? If you don't tell me what's wrong, I'm afraid I don't think I can be of any help. 
I think something has happened. Something bad? Yes, something very bad. You expecting a call? No, I was trying to call him, but his phone is switched off and he, he just never turns off his phone. Who never turns off his phone? My fiance, Stefan. When did you last see Stefan? Um, like an hour ago. An hour? Yeah. I've never felt so close to her. Oh, God, this is a nightmare. Said so you go to those cowboy nights, eh? Cowboy nights, what are you talking about? I can just see you on a Friday night down your local, your tin gallon hat, your cowboy boots. Maybe with a bit of line dancing. There isn't any line. What are you talking about line dancing? There's no line dancing. I bet you're the sheriff, aren't you? I bet you got your little badge, yeah? Do you know what? You're beginning to irritate me now. Can we turn that down a bit? Leave it on. It's really good. I like it. You know, one hour is not such a long time to be out of touch with someone. Oh, you just don't understand. You're right, I don't, but I can see that something's bothering you. No, it's it's nothing. Why don't you sit back down and start from the beginning? You know what? I made a mistake. And I just want to go now. Okay? Please. Okay, if that's what you want. I do. Thank you. All right, Raj. You look, what's the word? Perplexed. Yeah, I am. Miss Lesnick, you said you were afraid that you thought something bad was about to happen. <laughs> it was nothing. What do you think it is, this bad thing? I'd like to help if I can. Oh, it's him. Your fiancé? Yeah, he... He says everything is fine and that he'll call me soon. So everything's all right now? Yeah. And this bad thing you were worried about? Oh, it was nothing. I was worried and I'm really sorry I wasted your time. No, it's okay. It's fine. What so do they know about this? Back at the neck. What? It's just music, man. It's all right. It's all it is. Well, whatever your secret say from me. Listen, I know you think you're hilarious, but you're not, all right? Trust me. All I said was it's a bit... All right, drop it, okay? Enough. See you soon. Turn it off. Temper. What was that? DC Quakers, I'm in Jarvis Street. It's possible assault in progress. Assistance required, over. Terry, the cameras! Turn the CCTV cameras around to face the temporary lights, over. Jax, he's got a knife! Stop! Get out of the way! Fuck! <laughs> Let's go! It's DC Perkins, we need an ambulance to Jarvis Street. She's dead. Oh, you're Terry had the traffic cameras turned down so we could try and catch what was going on. Excellent. Nikki, can you do me a favour? Can you get hold of Banks to get him to chase down those takes? I don't want any delays or excuses. Any hold-ups, refer them to me. No problem. Right. Can we have a minute, please? Thank you. So, what do we know about the attackers? Two IC1 males, both Polish. You sure? Yeah, yeah. My mum's from Poland, I know the lingo. Oh, OK. Anything else? A name. The uh, knife man addressed the other guy as Felix. Felix with a K, Polish spelling. The reality of it is, boss, we can't be certain who did the actual stabbing. But I definitely saw the man, now identified as Felix with a K, holding a knife. Right. Well, couldn't they both be armed? I don't think so, Gov. I saw Felix standing, what, six feet away from me. He did not have a knife. I know what I saw, Gov. Terry, you're wrong. 
But just for argument's sake, let's say you're not. Maybe Felix pocketed the knife, maybe he got rid of it and we'll find it. But as to who did the stabbing, I was first on the scene. The thing guy was kneeling next to her with the knife in his hand, there was blood on the blade. Did you see him stab her? I saw her blood on Did you his see hand. him stab her? There'll be CCTV and we'll have a look at it, all right? Now, is there anything else? Yeah, Felix had a tattoo on his left forearm. It's a Polish eagle. It's a very specific design. It's the national emblem of Poland. He was also wearing a silver cross around his neck. Are you quite up on the Polish community? No, not really, Gov. It's well, not exactly what you my do surprise me. Excuse me, boss. All right, do the best you can. Any contacts, anyone you can talk to. Frankly, we need every lead we can get. Gov. Gov, uh, the victim's wallet. She must have dropped it in the struggle. Her name's Sarah Pierce, Mrs. Um, there's an address. OK. Well, get Joe and go over there and inform the family. We also need someone to formally identify the body. OK, thank you very much. I hate this part of the job. So, anything from the neighbour? Yeah, uh, Mrs. Pierce is... was a business manager for an IT firm. The neighbour doesn't know the firm's name. There you go. I'm a business card. Thanks. Also, she's divorced. She's lived here by herself for the past five years. The ex is away working in Dubai. Any other family? Apparently not. Puts it all into perspective, doesn't it? One minute you've got all this. Next minute some idiot comes along with a knife in his hand and it's all over. I'll try and get in touch with the employers. I didn't know you were religious, Max. I'm not. So when you said you had a lead, I didn't realise you had to pray for it, you know what I mean? Father Pavel Rudzinski. He's been here donkey's years, knows everybody. This is Terry. Uh, there might be an idea if I did this on my own. He's no family friend. What, keep your private life private, you mean? Something like that, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, Max, no can do. Terry, he's no family friend. Exactly. Jak się masz? Ja jestem w porządku, proszę księdza. Widziałem twoją mamę niedawno? Tak. Bardzo z ciebie dumna. O, no to ja życzę bardzo. Uh, Father Pavel, this is DC Perkins. DC Perkins? Father. I hope you'll find your mother more frequently than young bugs here. I'm afraid this isn't a social visit, Father. Oh. Earlier today a woman was murdered in a carjacking. Oh, it's terrible, but I don't see... The attackers are Polish, Father. Aha. One of the men is named Felix. He's tall, well-built, dark head. He wears a silver cross and he's got a tattoo of a Polish eagle on his forearm. The other man, the actual killer, is thin, blonde. I wonder maybe you've heard something. Max, the days when I knew every Polish person in London are all gone. Now, it is all young people. They have a different interests, different needs. They're Polish, Father. They still like to pray. <laughs> Somebody in the community must have heard something. I'm sorry, Max. I don't know this man. Okay. Okay, Father. But if you hear anything, you call me, yes? Oh, yes, of course. Of course. Yes. <laughs> Could you excuse me, please? This is very yes. Father. Oi. Is that it? What do you mean, is that it? What I mean is, he's hiding something. That'd be ridiculous. Why? Didn't you see the look in his eyes? What look? He, there's something he's not telling us. Terry, you heard what the man said. Listen to me. This might come as a surprise to you, but sometimes people lie. <sighs> Terry, stick to the country and rest, don't you? Gov? It's Max. We're on our way back to the Nick. OK, Max. Fill me in when you get back. Gov, Kezia just spoke to Sarah Pierce, his ex. He's going to get the next flight back. We've also found out that the car she was driving is a company car fitted with a tracking device, and they're trying to get a fix on the car's location. What do you mean, trying? Well, they're not getting a signal. What's the problem? Well, they think it may be broken. Apparently, Sarah Pierce reported it faulty two days ago. Oh, marvellous. Well, Kezia's talking to the company now. Well, Gov, according to the Stolen Vehicles Unit, this is the fourth carjacking they've had in and around the area over the past month, all top-end cars with lone female drivers. They think 
it's a car ringing operation. If they're professionals, they'll have form, right? Well, we've tried crim it, and even with the tattoo and the name, which are new pieces of evidence, got nothing on them so far. Well, if they're from Poland, maybe their form's back there. Well, it's worth checking out. I'll get Beth and Nate onto it. Cheers, Joe. Listen, Max, I'm serious. The priest is hiding something. I've known the man since I was five years old. Well, maybe that's the trouble. Maybe you're too close, mate. No, I'll tell you what the trouble is. You can't bear the fact you got it wrong back at the incident. That's the trouble. Max, you don't seriously think I'm that petty, do you? Well. Oh, mate, grow up. Come on, all I'm interested in is the facts. Yeah, the facts as you saw them. Listen to me. You've got an awful lot to know about being a copper, you know that? Oh, right. Well, like one day I might be as good as the great DC. You listen Perkins. to me, that Sergeant. I don't need a badge to tell me how to do my job. That comes with experience, 20 years of it. And look how much safer the streets of Sunny are for Thankfully, it. you're not toting a gun with SO19 anymore. Things take time. Yeah, clearly they do. 20 years and you're still a DC. Now, why is that? That's because this isn't a stepping stone to my career. This is my life. And I don't need some jumped up wannabe telling me how to live it. Understand me? You two, in my office now. Rest of you back to work. Right. You listen. And you listen good. I don't give a damn whether you two like each other or not. But I will not have you turning this station into a playground. And I will not tolerate you jeopardising this murder investigation with your pathetic egos. Clear? DC Perkins, stay here. I want you on your game for this. I am on my game for this. I need your experience. Maybe you should think about putting me with someone else. We don't have the luxury of choosing who we work with, Terry, do we? Unfortunately. Whatever your difference is, right, you work around them. You try and bring out the best in each other. You know that, don't you? Yes, boss. Don't you let me down, Terry. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, the fun's over. Jacob, how'd you get on with the traffic cameras? I got the tapes covered. By the time the cameras were turned onto the lights, the car was well away. OK, what about witness statements? We're still collating what we've got, but nobody seems to have actually seen the stabbing mark. OK, Max, what about your contacts in the Polish community? Any luck? Dead end, Gov. Gov, I just got off the phone with a security company that monitors the trucking device in Sarah Pierce's car. Now, it's still cutting out, but they've managed to get a fix on it. As of just over a minute ago, it was here at the Waybank Industrial Estate. Well, you've got all kinds of small garages and businesses over there, Gov. Perfect place for altering a car's identity and getting it back on the market. All right, rear yard, 15 minutes. Can I have a word, Gov? Can't it wait? Yes. Look, I know I haven't been in that long, but I think I'm capable of keeping my team in order without your help. Well, it's not about keeping people in order, Max. With respect, Gov. You're leading a team of very experienced officers. Now, that is as much about listening as it is about giving orders. You might want to remember that. Ouch. Thanks, Lee. Check it out the back. Right, OK. You two round the other way. Looks like they've been in gone, guys. Let's get this door open and see what we've got here. Someone talk to him. He might have seen something. I'll do it, go. You sure there's a place at the signal came from? I'm checking. Well, whatever this place was used for, Governor, it's not ringing cars. I'll tell you that now. There's nothing out back. Just another row of locked-up units. Your man next door says there's been a lot of activity recently. Cars going in, going out, mostly 4 before. What about today? It's been under a car all day, so we can't say. Well, maybe they use this place for storage. Maybe they change the plates here before moving on somewhere else to do the real work. Any more signals from the tracking device? Nothing. It's packed in all together. Either that or whoever stole the car has disabled it. Looks like we're back to square one. OK. Let's get back to the Nick. We need to find out who owns this place. You got something for us? Yeah. This has been emailed through from police in Walsall. Now, there's uh, 28 of them with this eagle tattoo. Must be one hell of a popular design over there or something. Yeah. Anyway, Polish police reckon that most of them are in the UK now. Now, there's four of them with this Felix name. Two of them are definitely over here because they registered with the DWP on arrival. Now, have a look at this. That's it. That's our guy then. Felix Adamski. He's got form, most of it's small time, but just before he fell off the radar, it seems like he moved up a division. 
extortion and armed robbery. Now I've got the address he left at DWP. It's Crismore Gardens. It's probably fake. Sure, sir. No, I checked it out. It exists. Right, let's get this to the DI. Well, cheers, Ben. Really appreciate that. Yeah. We got an idea on one of the car hijackers, Felix Adamski. We're on our way down. Okay, take the uniform back up with you just in case. We still haven't found the knife they used this morning. Yes, go. All right. Don't ask. Well, to jump round the back with you, make sure no one gets out that way. I'm Dias Carter, this is DC Perkins. We're from Sunhill Police Station. We're looking for a man called Felix Adamski. I don't know him. According to my records, he was living here two years ago. Oh, I have been here less than that. 18 months, maybe. What's your name? Halina Aleshnik. Halina Aleshnik. Do you mind if we come in, take a look around? What is he looking for? Oh, he's just naturally nosy. I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. It's a joke. It's a joke. Pani jest Polką, tak? Tak. Mm -hmm. no. So you don't know Felix Adamski, no? No, I told you. Who owns this house? I don't know. I, I rented through an agent and they rent a lot of flats and houses to Polish workers. I have their card. That's it. Okay, we'll give them a call. Maybe they can tell us where he went from here. Mr. Lesnick. Oh my boss! You know that? She came into the station this morning with some story about her fiance not having called her for an hour. She kept saying something terrible was about to happen. What's she saying? Her prayers. We need to get her out of there. Halina! Weistand! Open the door, we'll break it down! Max! Let's try and come to her. There we go. Halina, listen to me. Earlier today, Felix Adamski and another Polish man committed a murder. They killed a woman. Now, I don't know what your relationship is with this Felix, but we need to talk to him and his friend. She's saying he wouldn't do it, he wouldn't do it. Who wouldn't do it, Helena? Felix? Stefan! What's her fiance, Sarge? Stefan and Felix? Is that what you meant by something bad happening? She got a text from Stefan at the station, Sarge, saying that everything was fine and he was going to call her. Here's numbers, sir. <laughs> he wasn't the last person to call her, though. Phoenix? Brace yourself. Father Pavel Rudzitsky. Why did you lie to me, Father? Why didn't you tell me what you knew about these people? What was it? Some kind of misguided loyalty to the old country? You know me better than that, Max. Do I? I was wrong with my suspicions. Because I couldn't believe that Stefan would get tied up with this terrible thing. I prayed. It was not... This is a murderer we're trying to catch! Let's deal with this later, shall we? Meantime, get Helena out of the bathroom, talking about her fiancé and whoever this Felix character is. Felix and Stefan are brothers. Do me a favour, will you, Father? Get her out of that bathroom. Halina. Halina, for ya. John Carver. You're right, Van. Max, you know what it's like. You get too close to whoever's involved. You can't see the wood for the trees. I called the devil. She wants to speak to you, Max. Governor, it's terrible. Halina? Polish. Well, not really, no. I'm English, but my mother's Polish. She's from Warsaw. I'm from Warsaw as well. Oh, right. I've never been, but, um, yeah, that's where my mother's from originally. She came over here as a kid with her family. She grew up here and met my dad, an Englishman, and, uh, well, that's how I know Polish anyway. Yeah, I should have never made Stefan to come to this country, you know? Why did you come here, then? In Poland, I'm a pediatric nurse, you know, and mm -hmm. here I'm a cleaner. But I still thought that everything would be better here. 
but it just turned out to be worse. And then Felix showed up. Everything is easy for Felix. He has, he has a lot of money, he has his cars, he has expensive clothes. But he's a bad man, you know? Mm -hmm. And Stefan could never see that. Because he's... He's always his big brother. Yeah, I think I understand. Thanks, Terry. Let me know the minute you have anything. Right, we now know that our two suspects are brothers, Stefan and Felix Adamski. Terry and Max are talking to Stefan's fiance now. Are they bringing her in? They think she might climb up, so they're going to talk to her there. Gov, about the lock-up on the Waybank. According to the land registry, the last recorded owner is a man called Paul Rouse. He's a foreman at the India Wharf Container Yard. Great, get down there. Go with her, will you, Joe? Let's bring this guy in, see what he's got to say for himself. Finally, looks like we're getting somewhere. I have known Halina and Stefan almost since they arrived. Over... Two years ago. Well, she doesn't seem the type of girl to get involved in that sort of thing, does she? <laughs> Neither is Stefan. But he's deeply ashamed that Halina has to work to support him. In Poland, he is a teacher. But here, he's not qualified even to be able to work as a builder or plumber. What, so he becomes a criminal, isn't it? Desperation makes men do desperate things, Dizzy Bergis. But Stefan is not criminal. Oh, yeah, and what about Felix? Felix is everything. Stefan is not. Sadly, Stefan is in awe of him. From what they have told me, Felix did a lot for Stefan when they were younger. He brought Stefan and their sisters up virtually single-handedly. I knew that Felix has been talking to Stefan, filling his head with promises, just like back in Poland. Only this time Stefan listened. So when he wasn't there this morning, I just, I just knew. Halina, proszę cię, pomóż im znaleźć Stefana. If we don't find him, we can't help him. And will you arrest him? What choice do we have? We're at the container yard now, Gov. This is DC Masters. I'm DC Walker. We're from Sun Hill. What's this about? We'd like you to come down to the station and answer a few questions. What kind of questions? About a lock-up on the Waybank Industrial Estate. A lock-up? I've no idea what you're talking about. Well, according to the land registry, the lease is in your name. No, nah, you got the wrong guy. Mm. Well, just had Telford Zorich on the line. It's, uh... They're police. I'll go across on a manager here. What's happened? Well, is there some trouble? No, it's nothing like that. It's about a lock-up they reckon's in my name. It's a mistake, though. If that's all you want to talk to me about, I'm afraid I can't help you. We'll be the judge of that. Oh, come on, girls. Give me a break. Girls? Ladies. Try officers. OK, officers. I don't even know what a Waybank industrial estate is. Maybe we didn't make ourselves clear. We want you to come to the station. And maybe I didn't make myself clear. I don't know anything about it. We're investigating a murder, Mr. Ross. A murder? We believe the lockup that you claim to know nothing about was used by the killers this morning. Now get in the car. Yeah, that's right, Gus. Stefan's agreed to come to the house. He doesn't know we're here. And everyone's in place. Everything's covered. Yeah, yeah. We've got Banksy and Roger outside the house. Me and Terry inside. If he shows, we'll get him. Banksy, any sign of him? Nothing yet. Will he come? He's gonna say I betrayed him, right? You must show him it's You've done the right thing. Can I please wait for Stefan outside? Max. Not a good idea. Please, I, I just want to see him for a moment. We've got officers outside. We're inside. I'm going to trust you not to do anything stupid, Helena. Okay? But as soon as Stefan arrives, we are going to arrest him. Yeah, it looks like the boyfriend now, yeah. Right, wait until he gets onto the drive. 
I know, sorry to someone else has arrived. Looks as Felix, yeah. Five ambulance message. Mike, three, four, seven, Papa, Victor, Mike. The hit and run victim, young female. Okay, Terry and Max are at St Hughes with Helena Leshnik. Her condition isn't serious. We've just discovered that the van Felix Adamski was driving has just been found on fire with no sign of either suspect. Look, I know we've had a setback, but I really want you to be focused and positive about this. Okay, we do know the identities of both our suspects. The brothers Stefan and Felix Adamski, and we also have this man in custody, Paul Rouse. Joe, do you want to come in here? Yeah. Rouse is the registered owner of a lockup on the Waybank Industrial Estates. Uh, which is where we trace Sarah Pierce's car to. So he's blind, he doesn't know anything about it, says he's never even heard of the Adamski brothers. What do we know about his previous? A couple of counts of petty theft, but it was a long time ago. Nothing since, certainly nothing with any violence, Gough. OK, well, we'll see what he's got to say about that. Nikki, can you get the CCTV coverage from the bottom of Caris Moor Gardens and then take it from there? Gov. OK. That's it. Thank you. Mr Rouse, do you know Stefan and Felix Adamski? Never heard of them. Well, here they are. Take a look. That's Felix. That's Stefan. I've never seen them before in my life. So can you explain how a car they stole this morning found its way to your lock-up? How many times? I don't have any lock-up. Mr Rouse, is this your signature on this lease? I don't get it. I've never seen this before. I'm going to ask you again. Do you know Felix and Stefan Adamski? No. Look, I've already told you that. Someone's setting me up. Who? I don't know. But these guys, Stefan and whatever the other one's name is, I've never set eyes on them. And as for these luxury cars, where's the money supposed to be? Think about it. Shouldn't I be raking it in? Maybe you are. Or maybe I've got an overdraft as long as your arm and one ISA with 200 quid in it. You can check. I'll give you my bank details whenever you want. Golf. Rouse says he's never met the Adamski brothers and that the lockup's got nothing to do with him. And do you believe him? I do, yeah. It's just not his style, Golf. any of it. I mean, this is big stuff, right? High risk, high profit. Kezi is checking out his bank account now, but I doubt we'll get anything. What about this signed lease? It's easy enough to forge his signature or even to get him to sign it himself without realising it. Gov, I just spoke with Rouse's bank and he's broke. How broke? Like struggling to pay the mortgage broke. Well, couldn't he have hidden the profits in other accounts? I just don't think he's smart enough, Gov. And he's got nothing to show for it. Lives in a pokey house in a rundown area. So you think he's just the fall guy? I know that's not what any of us want to hear, but, uh, yeah, I do. Kezia? I agree with Joe, Gov. Do we know of any links between Rouse and the Adamski brothers? Not that we can find, and Rouse still claims that he doesn't know them. If that's the case, then they either pluck Rouse's name out of thin air, or there's someone else connecting them. What, you mean someone else in charge? Well, this is the fourth carjacking in and around this area we've had this month. I mean, that kind of car ringing operation requires someone with serious contacts, someone much bigger than Felix Adamski. So we need to find out who. Let's go back and check the financial records on that lockup. <coughs> You said he'd be safe. You said everything would be fine. It would have been, but we had no way of knowing Felix would turn up. Helena, you know we need you to try again. We need you to get in touch with Stefan. Don't you understand? Felix is going to think Stefan knew you would be there. He's going to harm him, and it, it's all my fault. Where is everything in order? Where is it? Stefan. Helena, is he okay? He wants to see me. Where? We're at church now, Gov. Yeah, I'll call you as soon as we know. Right. This way, please, this way. Please, this way. Yeah. He's not in good way. He's been beaten very badly by his brother. Helena, Helena. Wait. He might be on. Do you think he would hurt me? Stefan? Rense de Gore. Rense de Gore, no? Boli. Boli of Skoda. Ow. You have a weapon? No. Turn around. Ow. Stay there. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He knows what he's done, Max. 
and he is ready to take the consequences. His world has been turned upside down today. And when he saw Halina hid by the car, well, he didn't know what to do. He could have turned himself in. He has done. But he wanted to escape from Felix first. He knew you were with Halina and uh, you will come for him. So what's he doing here and not down at the station? Because he wanted to make his confession to God before he made it to the police. So, why did Felix hurt you, Stefan? He said everything had gone wrong because of me. He said I was weak. He thought I would turn myself over to the police. He, he thought I would betray him. And I just wanted to speak to Halina to tell her what had happened this morning. And what did happen this morning? I didn't know Felix had a knife. He said no one ever got hurt. Stealing cars. It's like a crime without victims. You take keys, you drive away and the rich insurance companies pay for a replacement. He said it was easy. The woman wouldn't give Felix the keys. And he went crazy. I never saw him like that before. I begged her to give them to him, but she didn't. And she fell into my arms and, and the knife was gone. At first I didn't know where, but then I saw it. But when I got there, you were holding the knife. I pulled it from her chest. I didn't know what else I can do to help her. So it was Felix who stabbed her? Tak. Uh, Felix Vionos. In English, Stefan. Felix uh, stabbed her. I'm not a criminal. I haven't done anything like that before. Let me ask you a question. Why did you come to this country? Like everyone else. To earn money. For a better life. Me and Helena wanted to buy a house in Warsaw, but it was impossible. So I gave up my job and and we came here. So what went wrong? Everything is much more expensive. So Halina took one job, took another job, but seeing her working so hard and uh, being tired all the time, and I tell her, why can we go back to Poland? But she said no. She said, first we make some savings. And I knew if we don't go now, we don't go home at all. So you saw an opportunity to make some easy money regardless of the fact that you knew you'd be breaking the law, is that right? When we were growing up, Felix was in charge of everything. Whatever we needed, he knew how to get it. So now, when he sees that uh, we have problems, he said, I'm gonna help you. Okay. How did you get away from him? Well, I took opportunity, I ran away. I had to. I thought he would uh, hurt Halina. All right, so it's gonna be. If you don't want to go down for murder, you tell us everything you know about this operation. Everything. You understand me? Right, everyone. Listen in. Stefan Adamski has told us that his brother Felix is going to be at the India Wharf container yard at 9 o'clock this evening. Now, Stefan has also informed us that Felix is the one who killed Sarah Pierce. Looks like I got that one wrong. Tonight, 18 stolen vehicles are going to be loaded into containers and shipped to the port of Gdynia in Poland, where they're going to be sold on to unsuspecting members of the public. Felix knows we're on to him, so I suspect his plan is to go back to Poland with the vehicles. Our plan, obviously, is to stop him. Well, if he knows we're on to him, what's to say he's going to turn up at all? He hasn't got a choice, Sarge. He's jumping to someone else's timetable. Felix is the muscle in this operation. Stefan said that Felix told him about a man that he was working for. Felix has never mentioned this man by name, but he says that he can get anything that he wanted to in or out of the country for the right price. Gareth Cross, he's the manager of India Wharf. Have you heard back from FIU? Yeah, definitely Cross paying rent on the lockup. We believe they forged Paul Ross's signature or tricked him into signing the lease to set him up as the fall guy in case things went wrong. Let's use the time we have to prepare. Nikki, liaise with Terry and Max, make sure everyone knows what to do and where to be. Gov. This is going to be a long shift, so if anybody has to leave... Good. Then I suggest you take rest now while you can. Thank you. Right. You all 
know what to do and where you need to be. Roger, you're with me. The rest of you remember, no one moves until the word comes through. Right, off you go. We have just arrived at the container yard. It's all looking quiet. Does it bother you, all this negative press that the Poles get? No, it doesn't bother me, really. Anyway, people like Felix don't exactly break the stereotypes, do they? No. But Helena does, doesn't she? And there's you, of course. I'm not Polish. My mother is. Yeah, but you know what I mean. I'm having a moment here. <laughs> Cross is opening the gate now. since you last asked me. Come on, you need to relax. You know what, maybe you're right. Let's have some music, eh? You've moved them. Move what? Well, your CDs. What CDs? <laughs> Terry, man, you need professional help. I've no idea what you're talking about. That must be him. Bang on time. Damsky's here. All units, as soon as he's through the gates, let's go. All units, go. Out. You're nicked. Check his office and secure it. You've got the wrong bloke, you know that. Right, Jacob, don't let anyone get on the container ship. Don't let them load any more containers, OK? All units, check for exit points. This is where you went? No, you? No. Check around the back of the boat. I'll go around there. Understanding. I want these injuries checked by the FME. So full, take them away. Come on. Stefan! Stefan, you're my eyes! Stefan! No, wait, I loved it! Shut up! Hey, baby, baby, baby! What the hell was that all about? Ah, oh, the usual. You let me down, you're not my brother anymore. Do you know? Language, same bull. What a ghastly mistake. Yeah, which you made. You know, you two work well together. You must be joking, right? No, you're like, um, butch and son dance. Oh, I get it. Get what? Yeah, yeah, you told him, didn't you? Hey? Why are you making such a big deal out of this? Who else did you tell? Everyone, of course. Oh, Terry. No. Thanks for earlier, mate. I owe you one. Partner. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Glad I missed you so much. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> what are you doing here, Father? I'm waiting for Halina. She wanted to see Stefan. 
You did well today. I oh, made too many mistakes. Oh, you put that dangerous man behind bars. It is a good day's work. Mm. What about Stefan? Stefan put himself behind bars. As from any mistakes, learn from them. That's what they are there for. Everything in life happens for a reason, eh? Of course. Good night, Father. The Branos Max. Next time on the bill. He's a, he's a glove. Oh, oh, right, you could oh, sit yourself oh, in this. Are you calling me a liar? Are you? Stay where you are. Come over and talk to us. Come on, it's just a little short swim. Yeah. Bye. Surprise. Get on the deck, son. You're nicked.